Hello my dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon and tonight I've got another book talk video to share with you guys. And tonight we are talking about Magpie by Elizabeth Day. Now, <laughs> this one's going to be a tough one to talk about mainly because, well first of all it's a thriller, but kind of the major twist comes really early on in the book. So first we'll just it kind of in general talk about the book and then pretty quickly we're going to move into spoilers because they start happening, the twists start happening so early, but I will give you fair warning before that happens so you can skedaddle if you need to. <laughs> anyway, Magpie is about um, a couple named Marissa and Jake. They meet and um, very quickly kind of progress the relationship. They're both really ready to start a family and um, Marissa's just, she's grown up without a mom and without really knowing her sister. So a family is something that's really important to her. And meeting a guy like Jake, who seems so put together, so handsome, so nice, who's also quite early on talking about a family, she's just really taken with him. So she tells her best friend, and I think roommate, maybe not roommate, but best friend, that she's going to be moving in with him. And her friend is kind of like, girl, really? Like you barely know this guy. And she's like, yes, I'm gonna move in with him. It's gonna be wonderful. So they move into this house. Um, <laughs> there's one scene when she goes to first look at the house where um, a bird flies in, a magpie. And I thought, if you know that old saying, a bird in the house means a death in the house, I kept waiting for this death to come, but it, it never really came. But um, <laughs> I thought for sure that's what they were foreshadowing. Anyway, she goes see the house, she loves it. Her and Jake move in. Marissa, her job is she's a children's book illustrator and writer. So she's got this little online business where people can DM her on Instagram or through her website and they can send her photos of their children and Marissa will um, write personalized stories and draw pictures of the kids, very cute. Um, idea and I've seen I've seen businesses like that before and it's just so sweet So she's doing that. She's working from home. And Jake starts to um, Notice that his business is slowing down a little bit. So because they're wanting to get a family on the way right away and um, Because you know, they've got this big beautiful house Jake sort of suggests that perhaps they get a lodger to move in and rent a room and sort of take some of the financial burden off of them Marissa agrees. And from there, things go sideways. <laughs> things go sideways. Um, and we learn about the lodger. We learn more about Marissa's past. We learn more about Jake. Just all of these different stories start unfolding. Um, and, and then part two comes. Like I said, about 50, 60 pages in, a big twist comes and everything's changed. So, like I was saying, if you don't want spoilers, here's your warning to get out of here. I don't want to spoil anything for you. And now, if you've already read the book, or if you just want to hear about what happens, let's get into it. So, first of all, <laughs> Marissa starts feeling that some things are off with their lodger, Kate. She starts to feel like maybe Kate's feeling a little too at home in this house. She's starting to feel like maybe Kate's feeling a little too comfortable with Marissa's partner, Jake. And she starts to get just really bad vibes from the whole situation. She starts following Marissa, or Marissa starts following Kate to see what's going on. Eventually, she goes through Jake's texts. Because one day he leaves his laptop at home, his laptop is connected to his phone, so she's able to read the text from there. She starts reading the text that Jake has been exchanging with Kate and sees that they are very much inappropriate. They're, they're saying I love you to each other. 
talking about how they can be together, how they're going to be a family soon. Now, at this point, Marissa's pregnant with Jake's baby, like they had talked about right from the beginning, starting a family ASAP. So she's pregnant at this point. Now she's seeing that Jake is having this affair with Kate, their lodger. Not only that, as she's scrolling through the text, she sees that it goes back months and months and months before Kate ever moved in. Years even. <laughs> so one day she gets ready to confront Kate and she says, how long have you been sleeping with Jake? And Kate kind of laughs because ugh, it's such a crazy question to her. Because as we soon find out, as we find out, Kate is Jake's partner and Marissa is the lodger who is acting as their surrogate. <laughs> I did not see that coming. At first for a while I wasn't sure what it was going to be. So when Kate, or when Marissa, sorry, first accuses Kate, and we find out Kate's like, no, 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 he's my partner. I had a brief moment where I even said to Ed, I'm like, listen, I'm calling it now. <laughs> this is what I thought was gonna happen. That Jake was leading some kind of double life where he had this one partner for years, this new partner, each of them thinking that they were the main partner and the other, the lodger, and was trying to lead some double life. Meanwhile, both of these women think they're the lady of the house, but it didn't turn out to be that. Kate is his long-term partner of six plus years. We learn that she has gone through round of IVF after round of IVF after round of IVF, trying to conceive a child, but she just cannot carry one past like a few weeks. So eventually they give up. They meet this woman, Marissa, at like a surrogacy conference. They click with her immediately. They think she's fantastic. Um, it's Kate's idea to bring her into the home because they go to visit her one time. She lives in this tiny apartment and she's like, we cannot have her living like this. Let's invite her into our home while she's pregnant. And then after that, you know, she can go her own way. So it was Kate's own idea to bring this woman in. What we later find out was going on was that uh, Marissa had like a lot of mental health troubles and she was on a lot of medications. So when they had originally met her, she was on these medications and doing pretty good. But Marissa doesn't tell Kate and Jake or even the surrogacy agency that she has these struggles. Although I wonder like where she was medicated so it would be documented if wouldn't the surrogacy agency find out about that when running background checks on her? I don't know. I don't know how that works, but I would think, right? Um, anyway, so once she meets with Kate and Jake and it's decided that she's going to be their surrogate, she's so happy to help them. Without consulting her doctor, she stops taking her medication. And that's what leads her down this a rabbit hole of delusion, I guess you'd call it. Um, I I can't speak to how accurate that is for whatever condition she might have. I think it's when Kate looks up the medication, it's for like schizophrenia and bipolar and psychosis. I don't know how accurate this book is to those diagnoses, <laughs> diagnoses and what would happen if you stopped, abruptly stopped taking those medications. I can't speak on that. But so Marissa, you know, she thinks she's doing the right thing for the baby by stopping the medications. But of course, you always consult your doctor before stopping any medications. <laughs> anyway, so it all comes to a head where Marissa basically attacks Kate because she thinks Kate is sleeping with her boyfriend. But of course, Jake is Kate's partner, not Marissa's. So... From there, things go extra off the rails because Jake has a mother who is an insufferable, insufferable asshole. <laughs> it's the best way to put it. She meddles. She's cold. Nobody's good enough for her. It's just a mess. So, but on the night when Marissa attacks Kate, it's actually Kate who calls out to her, you know, potential soon-to-be mother-in-law and father-in-law and they come and get Marissa and take her away to their home where she's safe 
Jake's father is a retired doctor, so he, you know, um, keeps an eye on her, takes her to her OBGYN appointments and ultrasounds and things like that. So Marissa's somewhere safe. So then as time, as time goes on, we find out that Jake's mom really likes Marissa a lot more than Kate and has now hatched this plan to bring Marissa and Jake close together so they can have their biological baby and get Kate out of the picture. And this all comes to a head one night at dinner when Annabelle, that's Jake's mom, admits this entire plan to Kate in the kitchen. And then Kate goes out and she's like, oh, tell them what you just told me. Like, tell them the insane thing you just told me in the kitchen. And then Annabelle tries to turn it on Kate that she's crazy. <laughs> Kate's like, no, 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 we can't, me and Marissa can't both be crazy. You can't, you can't play that field. And then it's actually Marissa who kind of steps up and says, Kate's right. I heard everything that Annabelle said. She, Kate's telling the truth. And then from there, everything kind of quickly tied up really neatly in a bow for the last like 20 pages. But I guess, you know, at this point, um, the doctors have been caring for Marissa. She was probably back on her medication. And so she was back to her true self. And so from there, just kind of all clues up nicely. Marissa gives birth to the baby. Kate and Jake get to have their happily ever after with their baby. Marissa, you know, she thanks them, saying because of all the rent she saved um, in staying with first Kate and Jake, and then with Jake's parents, she was able to save up a bunch of money, and now she's finally able to travel like she always wanted to. So she goes, and for a while she sends postcards and keeps in touch, but as the months and years go on, those kind of taper off, and then that's it. It's kind of like a happily ever after. So there you go, you guys. I did quite enjoy it. It kept me, I kept wondering what was going to happen. That first twist early on, loved it. <laughs> um, like I said, my only real complaint is that the end really um, clues up everything, tied a nice neat little bow right at the end very quickly. But on the other hand, it does make sense because at this point, Marissa is back on her medication. So she's Marissa again, not struggling <laughs> the way she had been. But um, I really enjoyed it. Plus, I think it's a really beautiful cover. You get the silhouette there of the pregnant woman. Thought it was great. Would definitely read more from Elizabeth Day. I'm trying to see when I was, um, when I picked this book up in the store, Okay, I found it. I simply read here um, the most mind-blowing book of the year. So when I read that, I was like, all right, I'm sold. Give it to me. <laughs> anyway, I would definitely recommend if you love a good thriller, domestic thriller. It was good. It was fun. All right, I'm going to go now. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you again real soon. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it, and hit subscribe. That helps me out a ton. Thanks, guys. Bye.